Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the show that talks to musicians about their dogs and the positive impact these creatures have on our lives. I'm your host, Tim Dill, coming to you under the watchful eye of my companion animal, Charlie, and today we welcome solo artist and virtuoso guitarist, Neely Brosh, who can also be seen and heard lending her talents to the likes of Danny Elfman, Death Clock, and Cirque du Soleil. And this is her expressive rocker dog. So this is Micah, and I've adopted him a little over, almost two, two and a half years ago now. Uh, he's very much a COVID dog. He is a Carolina dog, it seems, best of uh, my ability to, uh, I haven't done the DNA thing, but it seems like most of them don't even have the markers for that breed. So, oh, interesting. Uh, but he has all the characteristics and all the, you know, physical uh, appearance of one. So I decided to go with it. <laughs> okay. Well, and it's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you from North Carolina. And oh, I, when go. I looked at, I didn't even realize there was a breed called the Carolina dog. I didn't either. And you know what? That seems to be the story What he knows we're talking about him. <laughs> like, <laughs> he he's, doesn't he's always wagon. like that about it. But um, I think that seems to happen with most owners is that they have one and then they try to figure out what their dog is and they run into it. Uh, and that seems to be the story with a lot of the now I belong to all the Facebook groups and I connect with all the other people and the <laughs> stories seem to be similar. But Siri actually does recognize that as a breed. If you take yeah. a picture of your dog and you look up dog, and it always gives you Carolina dog. So <laughs> Siri oh, knows cool. very well. And apparently that's how some people learned what their dog is, is they're like, oh, I never heard of this thing. And then they start reading about it. And yeah. <laughs> that's that's great. Well, I, I immediately looked it up and I guess the American Kennel Club, you know, they've got descriptors of the dogs and it mm -hmm. does say shy and suspicious by nature. Mm -hmm. And I know a couple of your posts have said he's afraid of stairs. He was, um, yeah, in the very beginning. I think he had never seen them before, and I had to force him to go on a walk, like, because he, you know, he was just like gripping. Um, and he is like very shy with new people, and yeah, he, he, yeah. and especially now that he's so protective of me, that suspiciousness is like <laughs> heightened. <laughs> right. Well, it's sweet also that they, they're yes, so protective. Absolutely. So I get a lot of pandemic dogs, you know, mm. especially a show about musicians and musicians are always on the go, always on tour, never home. And then they get this, you know, this un, this forced break they need to take and they get a dog. Was that the impetus that you knew you're going to be you're going to be home at least for a little while? Or what was the what was surrounding you that made you get, you know, Mike in the first place? It definitely helped push it over the edge. You know, I, I think I was overdue and the few years leading up to it were just kind of a all going in that direction and things seem to be more lined up that way when the pandemic hit so definitely it was a factor for sure and i knew that yeah it wasn't going to be forever and i was going to need to learn <laughs> how to deal with leaving and right. uh, i try to tell myself i mean we don't know this for sure but i tell myself that it's harder for me than it is for him <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it's really it's it's that's the hardest thing for sure now, do you know anything about his past? Like, I think he was five years old when you got him. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of your posts. Something do you know like what, that, yeah. what were what was what was in his past? Do you know, or was he just he a rescue know, up the street? He or didn't know much. They knew that he had some trauma in his past, obviously, by the way that he was acting. And he's still kind of a reactive dog. You know, we're working on it. I always say he's working really hard on himself because he seems so eager to please, you know, <laughs> but he's definitely, he's got some reactive tendencies and it's, it was very clear. Like, I think he might, he might've been hit on top of his head because especially at the very beginning, like he never, he doesn't like an open hand. And especially if you try to go above the head then he really freaked out. So he really like in the beginning, I only had to pet him like on the neck and you right. know, that kind of thing until he got used to, and he's still like, you know, a year or two into it was like super flinchy every time I, he sees that it's me and he would still flinch and you can just tell, but I wish more was known. I mean, he must have been, I, I see Carolina dog puppies all the time on those groups now. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish I knew what he looked like as a puppy. Cause he must have been <laughs> like, oh, you know, and the, the idea that anybody would do anything to that little Carolina puppy or any puppy, but you know, it's just like, 
I wish I was around sooner, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it, you know, you, yeah. it, you always do wonder, um, his name, Micah zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Micah, he was already, uh, named that when I got him and I figured okay. a, it suited him. I thought, and B, I was like, he's five years old. I'm not going to rename him now. It seems, you know, uh, so I just decided I'll give him a middle name and zero. He's named after the, the dog in nightmare before Christmas. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a while since I've seen that uh, that film, and I know you uh, work with Danny Elfman on occasion. Right. But uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that. And so you didn't name him Micah, which a commenter pointed out that it, who is like God in Hebrew, which is sweet. Yeah, it was funny to me. I was just like, oh, that's that's funny, you know. And when I saw his name written uh, on the website too, I didn't know if maybe it's maybe they pronounce it differently. Whoever named him, I don't know. But he was always Micah, and I was like, all right, well, hey, <laughs> works for me. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I see a, no, a number of people do get dogs from rescue and they have a name and they change the name. So I like that you kept it. I understand that, you know, after five years, you don't want to yeah, have to relearn I mean, something as basic as that. Exactly. I mean, he's an adult dog. Maybe maybe if he was a puppy and he had like a name that I couldn't stand or something like ridiculous, and I would be like, yeah. okay, no, <laughs> we're, no, we're starting over. But I, I, will, I always wanted an adult dog anyway. I knew that I don't have it in me to, to do the puppy energy thing and that that wasn't the... Uh, that wasn't the right fit for me at the time and yeah my first, and actually you know he's my first pet ever i never had a pet growing up or anything and so it really felt overdue yeah well it's funny i found a post of yours that said it was your first dog ever that you'd quote unquote love the crap <laughs> out of whichever dog you got uh, yep <laughs> but but with him it's like i still i can't believe how much i love him even though i i knew that but it's you know, you don't understand that journey fully until you go on it. So I was ready. Yeah. Is that what's the most surprising of the whole experience is how Maybe. much, you know, how much of his heart, you know, could be. Yeah. I mean, I think I didn't realize how deeply they each have a personality that's so different from the next dogs. And, you know, I would get to know my friend's dogs really well. And now that I know my dog really well, I'm like, wow, they really are like different people. And you, you kind of just understand more about them. And, I think they they get it. I think they know when you when you are a dog owner and new dogs kind of treat you a little bit differently because I think they know you're part of the the team or you know there's just so many wonderful things about it. I think for me the the funniest thing is I'm always in shock that he doesn't open his mouth and talk all of a sudden because <laughs> he says so much. He's so expressive that every once in a while I look at him I'm like you've really never said anything like that. That's so crazy because you've said so much. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I say it all with this look. Oh, my God. It's that, that look. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of friends and friends' dogs, you did have another post that said that growing up, you know, without a dog, that you befriended everyone you came across. And I noticed in your That's Instagram, right. there are a number of dogs I want to ask you about. There's Muggsy. Oh, great. Yep. So who is Muggsy? So Muggsy is my my best friends in LA. Uh, it's their dog, and when I spend good amounts of time there rehearsing or uh, working, I stay with them. And they're actually both guitar players as well, Ben Cohen and Steph Goya. And we all went to Berkeley together, and we're old friends. And Muggsy is their pit bull, and mm -hmm. he's a sweetie. He's the biggest cuddle bug ever he's one of i mean he's a pit bull he'll let he lets you smush smush yeah. him and hug him and you know all these things that my dog who's uh not you know he's affectionate but it took him time you know he likes his space you know he's very particular so every once in a while i go to la and i'm like <laughs> yeah. um yeah and he's so, he's so sweet like he has separation anxiety whenever anyone there it doesn't matter if it's his parents or anybody visiting if he sees shoes coming on or a suitcase or something, he starts crying and flipping out. And and Muggsy actually had a, a big part in my getting Micah when I did, because I was actually living with a roommate at the time who was not super into dogs. And she was very much not about the idea of me bringing a dog in. And I think I needed it so bad. There was one LA trip where I was kind of all over Muggsy and she ended up seeing some of those social media posts and she kind of was like, I don't know. I think you need it. You know, <laughs> she like ended up changing her mind. So I always say it's, it's Muggsy that like, thank, thanks to him. 
I got my dog. <laughs> well, I saw, I saw, I think the post you're talking about where you're, you are with Muggsy and someone commented and said, you need to get a dog. And your reaction was, I'm trying. It's, it's either I'm trying, it's taking some time or and I was going to, I was going to ask, was it a long process being COVID? I know, you know, the shelters were empty and it was a long process, but was it just yeah. a long process of kind of getting the roommate to be yeah. on board? Or? Yeah, it was less, I mean, yeah, dogs were getting snatched up quick, but I mean, I, I think, yeah, if, uh, it take it took almost a year, you know, I, I was ready to go very early in the pandemic. I, I fostered once and uh, early in the pandemic and it ended up being so much shorter than I thought. I think it was like four days total. And I realized what a tough gig that is, you know, but yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I did that. And in terms of finding Micah, what was that process like? Were you open to anything? Big dog, small dog, certain breed, anything? Uh, I kind of was leaning towards a big dog. I think I thought that I might end up with a pit because I had connected to so many of them. But I was kind of open to, to, you know, just I was just looking around and, and, and seeing like, you know, who I would just connect with. Right. And yeah. uh, with Micah, luckily, it was the same rescue as I fostered through. So they already knew me and they knew my situation and they knew that when I came back around, they were like, oh, something changed in her situation, you know? So it was easier to get the thing ready to go quickly. And I actually couldn't believe that nobody had snatched him up because I'd been kind of looking at that page on and off for a while and I'd seen that face and I remember like reacting like, who's that guy, you know, like seeing yeah. those ears and those eyes. And I was like, oh my God, that is a unique dog. And I asked them, I was like, I can't believe no one adopted him. And they said, well, you know, he's so shy and reserved and everything that in all the adoption events, families want a big cuddle yeah. bug dog that'll run up to you and lick you and all this stuff. And he was just like standing off in the corner, like shy by himself. And I was just like, <laughs> you know, so I was like, okay, you know, that was definitely my dog. And when I first met him, he tried to run away from me the whole time. He was just like not having it. And I remember telling him like, you don't even know, but we're going to be best friends. You don't even know that. And now I tell him all the time, like, remember when you, you didn't even want to be around me. Was it ever discouraging in, in the early days? No, it didn't take very long. And I knew, I knew that he was a shy dog. And I told him, I was like, I have all the patience in the world. I just, I was just glad that nobody had adopted him. And if that was the reason, then I was even more all for him taking his time. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't take that long. I think I, I only met him twice before they brought him over, his foster parents brought him over to, to stay. And I think he knew like, cause right away he was, he was fine as soon as he got home. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if any of these other dogs I'm going to mention was that foster. Uh, the next dog I saw was Nugget. Yeah, so Nugget is another rock star dog. He is Pete Griffin's dog. Pete Griffin is a bass player. Um, I play with him in Death Clock. And he actually played bass on one of my new songs that just came out yesterday. So funny that that comes up. And uh, Nugget is a very good little travel dog. He's actually been out, like been out with Death Clock last time and, and stuff. And he's just this tiny, I call him Snugget. And he's just this tiny little dude. And first time I met him, he was also afraid of me and he hid behind his, his mom's leg. And I was like, this, this little dude is so cute. <laughs> They're all so yeah. funny. I mean, yeah. like you said, the, the, the individual personalities, when they come yeah. out immediately, it's so funny. It's so I funny just get it now, you know, like I, I didn't fully understand that before. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Roxy. So Roxy is another friend's, LA friend's dogs. Uh, you might have seen a picture where she's wearing a Halloween costume that says I'm so extra. That's because yeah. she is. She knows she's cute <laughs> and she's she loves to be picked up. She's just a darling little thing. That's fun. Those are fun yeah. dogs. And last is Paul Wall. Uh, so Paul right? Wall is another is a friend of Muggsy's, and he's a little. <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> he's a little. Uh, um, oh God, uh, he's a beagle, right? Yeah, he's a beagle. I think that's the the name of the breed. And he's just he was still a puppy when I met him, so he's got a lot of puppy energy in him. And Muggsy just go crazy all over each other. He's Muggsy's neighbor, and when I was again, staying with them for a long time every morning was me like trying to drink coffee without Muggsy and Paul Wall just like <laughs> smashing <laughs> everything out of the way. Yeah. Now, now, in mentioning 
it was Nugget that's been out on tour with you or been to gigs or yeah, rehearsals. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. find that uh, having a dog around in that situation kind of either relaxes you or or is a good kind of distraction? Yeah, it's everything. I love when there's a dog on the road that just appears and it doesn't even matter who it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It kind of breaks up the monotony, you know. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned you insinuated earlier about missing the dog when you mm. when you travel and there's plenty of posts. I, I see a lot of your posts, a lot of the either the reels or the um, mm. the what do you call the movies on Instagram. But you're yeah, the stories. It's always like I'm missing this guy. I'm missing this guy. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, I want to ask, what do you miss it? most? Does he just encapsulate what home is all about? Or is there certain aspects of just the companionship that you miss? I think it's both. I mean, it is. I think it's only doable because I'm away from home, right? So like there've been a few times where I would have to get up in the middle of the night for a really early flight or something. And so in those cases, it only happened a couple of times, but I would drop him off at his sitters the night before and then going to sleep without him at home, even if it's just for a few hours, like that's so much harder than being out somewhere without him because you know, you're not at home, you're already, it's, it's different. You're like, your brain's not expecting him to be there almost. So it is probably both, but I think I just miss him. I, I, I mean, in a perfect world, if he was with me all the time, that would be amazing. But it, I know that I, I got a dog that is like not the most practical to travel with. And I, yeah. I knew that going in, but you know, it is what it is. I, I wish I could do that. There's so many friends that are like, oh, I wish you could bring him. Like, you don't want to see me try to go with that beast through an airport. Like, <laughs> uh Everyone What's the longest that sees you... us, like, he's pulling you. Yeah. What's the longest you've been away from him? Uh, right now, it's been a month at a time. Uh, I'm about to do almost two months later on this year at once. And I'm, uh, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And who who watches him? Do you always give him to a professional sitter or, a you know, a, a uh, order? It, de it depends. Yeah. Um, usually we find a good sitter. Sometimes it's a close friend. I mean, he's, he's been in all kinds of situations. His foster family that fostered him for four months and got him ready for adoption is still really involved in his life, which I love because that's nice. They, they had a, it, it seemed like the type of situation where it might've been a foster fail if I hadn't come along. And I, I love that they had that bond and I wanted them to keep that relationship. And, he, and they have a dog that kind of taught him everything about being a dog and she's kind of like his only friend. And I'm like, okay, this, this, you know, they have to stay together. So that that's perfect when that can happen, but it depends, you know, he's got a bunch of sitters and I'm gone so much and, and on such a kind of not random, but you know, it's an, an intermittent basis and it can yeah. be really quick and a lot, or it could be long. And so he, I think he's just used to the idea of going somewhere. And then at some point I show up and, bring him home. At least yeah. that's what I tell myself. Does he show any signs of anxiety when say the suitcase comes out? Not really. He gets excited to leave. He, he <laughs> like, he knows he's going somewhere and he just, he loves going in the car. And so he just, he just starts barking the same way. He gets excited to go anywhere. But the, the better he knows the sitter, the least, the, the less he notices me leaving. So if it's someone that he really likes and he knows really well, then like he'll just run in there and he won't even notice. And I just try to go before he does. Yeah. But it always works out. I mean, even when it was somebody new and I had to really, you know, drag him in there and run away and, you know, it's the horrible moment. But, you know, two hours later, they send you a picture. It's like, he's coming around and it's <laughs> always fine. Does he have a go-to treat or toy that you have to bribe him with? Not really. I mean, he is treat motivated and nothing specific. He he likes them all. Uh, he's not much of a toy guy, but he does love decapitating them. <laughs> <laughs> like like many other dogs, he just he decapitates them, and it's always just the face. You know, I don't understand what it is. I'm like, this is cold blooded, Micah. Why just the face? <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, your Instagram feed. It's funny. Mm -hmm. You know, the the artists I come to. You know, they're they're kind of two camps. One is, you know, casual dog. And it's like, oh, they got a dog. I'll, I'll try to talk to them or they'll have a post or two that will insinuate that they're very passionate about the dog. But you, who I like, and a lot of my guests are like, there's a lot of the dog, you know, the, lo the dog's almost like an extension of your brand or mm -hmm. at least one half of it where, mm -hmm. you know, your other half is, is guitars, <laughs> and one half is dog. So it's always fun to look at 
the people who engage with you and comment. Uh -huh. And this is, there's not a question here, but there's an overall comment of just, it's very entertaining. It's very entertaining to decipher between the guitar people and the pet people, both, both, That's both who funny. are very passionate about the <laughs> each, each endeavor. That's funny. Yeah. But that does lead me to say, do you have fans who reach out to you when you meet them and, and inquire about Micah? Like, how's your yeah. dog? Yeah. I hear about, I, ha I hear about it a lot. Um, I think, a lot of music lovers love dogs and and i think it felt like when i adopted him that a lot of my fans were like oh she's a dog lover and it almost like won me more points or something and it's like <laughs> well of course i'm not gonna abuse animals geez you know but yeah and, and ever, anywhere i go now people are like give that dog a, a hug for me and you know it's just i'm, I'm glad they've uh, accepted him with such open arms you know yeah how about He's other shy? fellow musicians yeah that's that goes i mean because so many of them have dogs you know yeah. it's it's always like any camp it's like look at my dog there's my dog here's what, you know it's always like that <laughs> that's great i love that well yeah. i got my eye on the clock so let's uh cool. move on to the zoomies which is the okay. last five quick questions and the first question sure. is do you kiss micah on the mouth no okay <laughs> Well, it's funny that you say that. I mean, I'm always like, oh, you got to kiss him on the mouth. You gotta, I'm always a fan of that. But I understand if he's not, if he's got that instinct to not want to be approached, yeah, he's you know, not, top down and in your face. When you get too close to him and he doesn't like it, he starts kind of low-key growling to let you. He's very <laughs> expressive. He will let you know what he's okay with and what he's not. And he's never been, a, he's not a licker. He's not a kissy kind of dog. And that's kind of what I prefer. Like I, as much as I love dogs, I, d I don't love like licking all over my face and stuff. And so he's so not that jumpy kind of yeah. dude that I think, again, it's, it's a good match, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Question number two is if you're, if Micah had a theme song, what would it be? Um, so I actually funny that you should say this, uh, in my head, I write so many songs for Micah. They're mostly very silly. They appear at random times and I'm just singing it to him and being like, this is good that no one's watching. But uh, in one of those moments, I did come up with this like little melody that just sounded like it could be a great little jingle for, uh, it's not the rescue that he came from, but there's a Carolina dogs rescue. So I basically kind of came up with this little jingle for them and it goes, saving Carolina dogs, saving Carolina dogs, I'm saving Carolina dogs, saving Carolina dogs. And I, I've been working on this little demo, a little recording for them, for them to use, uh, as the little jingle for it. And they're, 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 they're all about it and stuff. And it's, it's been a cute little project that I want to do just for fun. Um, so I guess that comes to awesome. my head. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love yeah, it. Thanks. I guess I, I would say two follow-ups to that is, could you do one for Rocker Dog Podcast? And two, has he ever inspired you musically? Like I know a lot of your stuff is instrumental. So right. you know, if I, I don't tend to ask this question to artists that have, you know, lyrical components. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's going to be heavy handed to get right, you know, some right, sort right. of dog theme in there. But if there's, I know you guys hike and walk and there's, yeah. there's anything inspire kind of a melody in your head. I think he does. I mean, I think as much as I make fun of like silly little melodies or songs that I come up to come up with to, to like nickname him with or whatever, um, every once in a while you hear something that you feel stronger about and that becomes a tune. And so, yeah, of course it, it can come from there. And I think that's the way that I'd like to approach a jingle for you too, where it's just like, if it comes through organically and it ju I just hear it in my head and it's what makes sense, then that's what should go there yeah. you know yeah so, okay yeah okay question three i know he doesn't go on the road with you he doesn't tour but if he did what would he <laughs> insist be on his tour rider <laughs> um you know what's really funny the thing he loves the most about human food and of course he's gonna like anything is my rice pasta loves my rice pasta more than anything it's so strange so i think he would demand some of that Okay. You need to be even more gluten free than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to picture that. Is that more in the form of a spaghetti or more in like a penne or like a noodle? Uh, I've been buying the spaghetti kind and yeah, he goes crazy for it That's in so any form, whether it's cooked or not. He loves it. Funny. You got to video him eating. I can't imagine a dog eating, eating yeah, and spaghetti. He doesn't even chew it. He just, you know, he takes a big glump and it's gone. It's <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> Okay, question four, do you have a dog voice? Do you speak to him in a certain tone or also Probably. do you give him a dog voice? Do you speak for him? 
So both. I'm sure. Or... Yeah, I'm sure that I have a, a cutesier tone when I talk to him. That's for sure. Uh, and I do have a voice for him, and I kind of think about it whenever I'm, there's a plate of meat or something, and he's looking at me, and he's like, well, you know, uh, I like meat too, uh, you know, uh, you could uh, throw some of that over here, because I also like that. <laughs> That's what I imagine him like. <laughs> do you imagine him like that, or do you say it out loud? I mean, even I, say, I sometimes say it out loud, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I love Man, that. You're, giving, you're making me give away all the secrets that I'm like, this is good that no one's watching <laughs> Pretty soon, everyone will be watching. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, last but not least, is there a dog organization or service you'd like to give a shout out to just for doing good by our dogs? Yeah, the Saving Carolina Dogs Rescue would be a perfect one. They really okay. do a great job of both rescuing them for real and uh, bringing the awareness towards the breed that so many people don't know about. And I've seen them have wonderful stories of saving dogs and going all the way to adoption and and they're just so committed and uh they do a lot of great fundraisers too like they make a calendar every year full of the community of carolina dog micah actually made the calendar this year i was very proud of him and they raise a lot of money to continue saving dogs that way so i'm all for supporting them in in any way i think that's a that's great, great great way to do it yeah that's great i'll look them up and provide a little bit more information where you can awesome. contact them uh in the outro yeah well, nilly absolutely. thank you for taking the time to speak with thank us you. i know you were tight on time and uh but i oh, appreciate good. it i've been looking forward to talking to you for a long time thank so i appreciate you, it thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it it's been my pleasure thank you all right a big thank you to Neely Brosh for coming on the show and sharing her dog, Micah, with us all. You can catch Neely Saturday, August 5th with Danny Elfman at the Five Point Amphitheater in Irvine, California, and on tour with Death Clock starting in late August. For shows, music, and more, go to neelybrosh.com. The dog organization Neely gave a shout out to was Carolina Dog Rescue, who are a 100% volunteer-run nonprofit rescue for Carolina dogs and Carolina dog mixes that relies on a network of foster families and transport volunteers to give Carolina dogs a second chance at life and the loving forever home they deserve. To adopt, foster, transport, or sponsor a dog, visit SavingCarolinaDogs.org for more information. Thanks as always for listening. Please help us keep the momentum going by spreading the word, sharing our Instagram posts, and rating us on iTunes. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode with an artist whose dog plays heavily into her highly successful new album, so be on the lookout for that. All right, we've said all there is to say. We'll see you next time, dog people.